Hello, hello, hello. I wanted to do a different video than what I normally do. Normally it's me playing PUBG, playing something else. But uh, I decided that I wanted to go over some of the books that I uh, read. Because um, I'm somewhat of a nerdy fantasy reader. And um, I will proudly stand by it. So I wanted to just briefly go through a couple of the authors uh, and do some recommendations. So that's what this video is going to be about. So if you want uh, recommendations for a good read, this is the video for you if you're into fantasy. If not, you should probably scroll on to the next topless girl you can find in the feed. So I'm going to start out with uh, one little disclaimer. And that disclaimer is... Tolkien is not on this list, and the reason for that is I actually don't like Tolkien. I'm not gonna question the fact that he uh, wrote probably one of the best fantasy books of all time, but it's written in a way because it is a somewhat old book, so it's written in a way that I don't like reading it. And yes, you can comment and call me an idiot if you want to. That's fine. I just don't like Tolkien's books. Uh, I love the movies, though. Yeah, I'm one of those. And speaking of that, we're going to have something about another movie here that I'm going to come into. But I'm going to start with the grand old daddy of fantasy. His name is David Eddings. Now, David Eddings uh, has uh, written, of course, a lot of books. Um, most of the books are divided into uh, five-piece books, uh, which means that he has uh, two main worlds, if we can break it up to that. One of them is about a church knight called Spahak, uh, and those books are known as the Illinium and the Tamuli. Um, and then there's another book series uh, about a young boy who goes on an adventure with uh, some people to save the world. And that book is called The Belgariad and the Tamuli. Sorry, The Belgariad and the Malorian. I always get them confused for some reason. So this is basically uh, all the books that he wrote. I don't actually think all of them are here. Maybe. Um... But these two series, the Church Knight series uh, called the Elenium and the Tamuli, is basically about a church knight who is trying to find a cure for his deathly ill queen. Uh, and in that regard, he's a little bit special because um, he's known as Anaka, which means the only man without a fate. The gods cannot see his fate. Uh, which makes them a little bit nervous about him. Um, and that's basically the gist. I don't want to give anything away. Uh, it's just the gist of the story. Uh, the other book series, um, known as uh, The Belgariad and the Melorian, is about this young kid uh, who is an orphan being raised by his aunt on a farm place. And, um, well... Let's just say that he gets into the classical adventure with, like, the thief, the warrior, the mage, his aunt, one of his friends, uh, you know, stuff like that. And then they have to adventure out into the world to save it on more than one occasion. It is wicked good reading. Um, besides that, uh, those two series, he has one uh, series called The Elder Gods which I'm not a huge fan of. It's still good reading, but it's not one of those book series that I'm going to be reading again and again and again. I've read it twice, uh, and it doesn't captivate me the same as the two first ones do. There is one standalone. That's the big book here in the end, I think, uh, called The Redemption of Alphalus. Now that one, that is a good book. The sneak thief who is approached by a man to steal a book from the house at the end of the world. And lo and behold, that was a bad idea. But holy crap, it's an adventure that this thief goes on. 
Um, so David Ennings is a very classical writer, um, and he's unfortunately not with us anymore. But I mean, he has the for me the grand old daddy of fantasy. That is for sure. Um, though being active for some years, um, this is basically the lot of the books that he uh, <clears throat> that he wrote. And um, compared to some of the other authors that I'm gonna go through here, there isn't that many books from him, but they're well worth a reread uh, from time to time. Next up, this handsome dude. He is uh, called Patrick Rothfuss. Now, Patrick Rothfuss has written probably one of the best fantasy books around. It is called Name of the Wind. That is the first in a series of books. Uh, and it is definitely one of the best written books I've read in my entire life. But Patrick Rothfuss has one thing going against him. Excuse me for a second. I'm not used to talking that much. So um, the problem with Patrick Rothfuss uh, is that the last book, the third book in the series, has now been on the way for, I don't know, eight, nine years? It feels like 15. Um, I mean, I'm waiting very patiently, but um, in the meantime, he's like putting out other smaller books, appendixes to, to this one, which is not what people want. People want the conclusion of this series because it is one of those that has a build-up. Uh, I don't want to go too much into uh, to, to these books. He only has the two out, uh, but he definitely needs to be on my list of, uh, of fantasy uh, literature. That is for sure. Next up, we have uh, this beautiful lady, Naomi Novik. Um, she's written a lot. I'm only going to go into this series called Temeraire. Uh, the Temeraire series is a weird little thing. Because we're talking about the war between England and France uh, in the 1800s. We're talking Napoleon on one side and Nelson on the English side. But with the little added aspect that they actually have an air force consisting of dragons. Uh, and the dragons are pretty big. It's like they mount cannons on them and uh, like have like... 20, 25 cadets and a captain and lieutenant and it's very much about the bonding between the dragon and the captain and it is an amazing series uh, it really is and uh, Naomi Novik is really good at mixing the fantasy in with the historical which makes it very believable kind of like if if you want to tell a lie Tell a lie that's based with a little bit of truth in it because it makes it more believable. Or so I've heard. I don't lie that much. Next up. Well. This guy is Richard A. Knack. And that may not mean a lot to you. I'm going to present one series that I am a huge fan of. And that is this one. Legends of the Dragon Realm. This is the second volume. Um, I can't even remember how many volumes it's up to. It's about a young mage called Cape, who is yeah, a little bit difficult to explain, but the reincarnation of uh, Cape Bedlam. Uh, I think it's Cape Bedlam, or is it his name is Cape? I think something. It's been a couple of years since I read that. But. Um, Oh my god, it is amazingly written. Um, and the dragon, dragons and the dragon lords. And I remember the stallion in the middle is this being of unfathomable power. Um, it is 
such a huge um, series um, to, to, to read. Richard Ignac also has written uh, a lot of uh, World of Warcraft novels. Um, I believe he was contracted by uh, Chris Metzen um, and Blizzard to, uh, to do novels. And uh, among others, uh, he has written the stories of uh, Ronan the Red Mage, uh, who is uh, later to become the leader of uh, the current tour in uh, World of Warcraft Mothers. It is some of the best stories. Um, I would say the only story that actually supersedes the ones from uh, Richard A. Knack is the one that uh, Chris Metzen wrote himself. And Chris Metzen is not on this list. And the reason for that is, as far as I know, he's only written that one novel. But he is the man behind World of Warcraft. So Then there's this guy. And this is one of my all-time favorite uh, authors. His name is uh, Brent Weeks. And I'm guessing this is a um, somewhat uh, earlier picture. Uh, of him because I'm pretty sure he has a little bit of gray in uh, both the beard and the hair now. Um, he has uh, two series and both series are definitely among my favorites. Uh, I'm gonna start with, uh, with, with the least favorite of them. Uh, it's called The Black Prism. Uh, and it's basically uh, built around uh, mages are divided into color. So you have uh, mages who can throw, let's call it blue magic. Um, and there's like different uh, aspects of the power level they have. Some can, th most can throw one color, that's a blue mage. Then there's some called polychromes, which can kind of go into other colors too, but they're gonna be the ones close to blue, so like blue to maybe yellow, maybe green, like that can be a little bit of that. So you mix it up and, and you start getting something where the colors intermix a little. Uh, and then there's some really rare ones where they can throw one color and then add a color from the other end of the scheme. And then there's the black prism, the emperor. Uh, he can throw all colors, uh, and he has to do this because he needs to balance how much magic is being used. So he actually has to do this. Um, so to boil it all down, it turns out that he has a bastard son um, who is uh, almost an orphan at the, the point where the book begins. Um, and, well, it just evolves from there into um, a dastardly adventure that is part politics and it's really really well uh, written i don't want to dwell too much on that series because the other series which is the night angel trilogy this one that is my all-time favorite uh, when it comes to uh, fantasy books it is extremely well written it is extremely extremely um i mean it's just it cuts through all the bullshit that many of uh, uh, the authors are, are having in their books which many of the ones on this list don't actually have well one exception um but anyways um night angel trilogy is about a young orphan boy azoth uh, who uh, apprentices with a uh, vet boy uh, a wet boy is kind of like an assassin, and uh, if that's a blend heard me say that, he would probably kill me. Um, because assassins have targets, wet boys have deaders. And the reason for that thinking is, the moment that a wet boy accepts a contract, he doesn't have a target, he has a debtor because the person is already dead, he just doesn't know it yet. Now, Dirt of Blind is kind of an enigma in this book because he's an assassin. Sorry, he's a wet boy. Yikes, he's gonna kill me. Um, 
he's not an evil person, but he does evil things. Um, and the backstory for him is way longer than anyone thought. Um, and the friendship that and and the bond that he's creating with this uh, young orphan is what these books are about. But basically, the books are actually a love story about um, the the kid's love for his friend uh, back in the day. Um, a young girl called Eileen. Um, it's an epic, epic uh, book series. Um, and I can only, in the strongest terms, recommend it. There's also just uh, been released a new book, which is apparently a new part of a new trilogy about the, 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 the uh, young boy. Um, I'm going to leave that for now because I haven't actually finished it yet, but um, it's more of the good, good stuff. Um, but Brent Weeks, if you're into fantasy, you need to, uh, to check this out. Then there's this guy. And before I said that there's a lot of bullshit in, uh, in, in, in some author's uh, books, this is one of them. He is an extremely prolific uh, writer. This is uh, R.A. Salvatore. Um, and he writes uh, about Forgotten Realms, which is a Dungeon Dragon setting. And he's made one of the most known characters in the Forgotten Realms. A young drow elf called Drist de Odin, uh, who is part of, I can't remember the, yeah, I can't remember what they're called, the Champions of the Hall, I think, which consists of King Bruno Battlehammer, his adopted daughter, who is human, uh, Bruno Battlehammer is a dwarf, his adopted daughter, Caddy Bree, who is a human, Regis the Halfling, and Wolfgar the Barbarian, uh, and then Drister Urden, and uh, his, um, his uh, pet magic black panther called Gwynwerra, or something like that. I can't pronounce it. It's spelled like something from Welsh or something. Uh, but there's a lot of side characters to it. Um, among others, one of the probably best written villains of all time, an assassin called Artemis Entreri. Um, and also there's uh, the, the insane mages of, uh, I can't even remember what it's called. Um, something about the lonely something. We have Elminster the mage. I don't think he's actually uh, present in the dress books, but he's part of the Forgotten Realms lore universe. So a guy like Kilburn Blackstaff pops up from time to time. Basically, there's a lot of books. I've written the first 15, and as you can see here, I don't know how old this picture is, but there's a lot more than just 15 books. Uh, and they span a long time. And people die and get resurrected and die and... <laughs> e Christ. So, I talked about bullshit. Um, and I'm when I'm saying bullshit, um, what I mean is some authors have a tendency to go overboard. And for instance, one of the things about Arya Salvatore is that when he's describing a sword fight, sometimes he's going like, and then he shift his blade 12 centimeters to the right and 11 centimeters to the right and then another four centimeters to block the blade he is so descriptive in the way that he uh describes fighting that it's almost too much um and that's why i quit after 15 books because it kind of got a little old for me um but i would still say that the character development uh, and the stories are brilliant and worth a read. That is for sure. It's only in the later books where I stepped off. I would still highly recommend him. But don't start on his books unless you have um, no other authors to uh, to start out with. Because once you're 
you, once you start on this project, it's gonna take a couple of months unless you really, really fast. Next up, this guy. Why did it? Why did the picture go so small? That's weird. Anyways, he looks a bit old here. Um, as far as I know, he uh, published his first uh, his first uh, book when he was 19, 18. And he couldn't get a single goddamn company to do it for him. So his parents had to uh, um, make a company called, I think in the US they call it an LLC or something. Um, to uh, to to um, actually make the book and uh, put it out on the market, and he spent a year traveling around in small bookstores, talking about it, and it turned into a uh, New York Times bestseller. And then somebody grabbed the film rights and made one of the most shitty movies I've ever seen in my life. And that was really, really, really sad because the four books that came after. Are some of the best that I've seen, and the first book is also really good. Uh, his name is Christopher Paulini, um, and um, the book is called Aragon. I apparently napped a really small picture here, but basically, uh, Aragon is a uh, boy living in a little village in the mountains, and he one day he finds a dragon egg. Uh, the dragon egg hatches for him, and he is bonded with a dragon called Sephira. Actually, he names her, but eh, long story short. This thing is, uh, the dragon riders are extinct. There are no dragons left, with the exception of one, and that is the dragon called Shurikan, which is belonging to the evil king Galbatorix. Um... Now, in the movie, he was uh, played by John Malkovich, and it is, I mean, I like John Malkovich, but bloody hell, that was a bad role for him. Uh, holy crap. Um, I'm really, really happy about one thing, and th that is that the actor uh, called Ed Spieler, who played Aragorn, has finally gotten his breakthrough, because... He did get kind of a breakthrough in this, but I've seen him in nothing since then. And then he finally uh, got the, the breakthrough in the new um, and last season of Picard, where he plays uh, Jack Crusher. So I'm really, really happy that uh, he got that one uh, knocked out of the park. Um, but the Aragon uh, series... Uh, when it comes to books is really really well written it's easy to read um there's a lot going on that the movies don't even out uh, the movie don't even come close to, uh, to to scratching at the surface at and i'm definitely hoping that this could be made into a um, a tv show um i think it has the potential for it but could be a little bit um uh, expensive with all the dragons but i mean with game of thrones and house of the dragon and all the other stuff they should be able to do dragons now and then the bonus the easter egg so to speak is this guy he's called nuns Utland or something like that he says uh, swedish i think and he has written a book series called lost dogs and that's a few books out now. Um, I've only written uh, the the first one, uh, which is this one, and it is it, it's it's a uh, book series about um, werewolves, and it's written primarily in the third person. But the the, the way that he describes uh, you know um, persons and do character build up. I just had to put it on this uh, on on this uh, video, even though that this is probably not a bestseller like the other. Many of the other books are all bestsellers. This one isn't, but it definitely needs an honorable mention here. Um, so 
that was a little bit of a different video from uh, from me um going over a little bit of uh, some of the books that i really like to uh, to to read um another honorable uh, um, mention that i should have on here besides nils is uh, definitely uh, one that's probably like 10 times or 100 times New York Times bestseller. But that would be the Harry Potter series uh, by uh, Joan K. Rowling. Um, I remember not reading them until the fifth book was out. Because I always was like, Harry Potter, that's a children's book. Blah. And at that point in my life, I was deep into David Eddings. Um, today, Harry Potter is probably the books that I've reread the most. Um, and that is just the, the, well, yeah, Harry Potter and Brent Weeks, uh, the Night Angel trilogy. Those two are the ones I've read the most in my life. That's for sure. I probably think Brent Weeks has uh, Harry Potter beaten. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, I know I'm just droning, uh, about here. Um, I hope this could be, uh, a little bit of assistance to you. If you're like a fan of fantasy and you need something to uh, read, um, I definitely, definitely say that all the books that I've had here will be a good read for you. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I'm hoping to do a bit more content other than just dropping PUBG gameplay and Fortnite gameplay and stuff like that. I, I really want to do some content which actually has some viable content in it. Um, and with that in mind, uh, I'm going to say please hit the like button uh, and hit subscribe if you want more content um, because that's going to show me that I'm on the right track here. Um, so the more subscribers I can get, the better. Thanks for watching and uh, have a really nice day.